He's no longer going out to the arcade or the bar, and the new 21-year-old 20, or 18-year-old phony idea, whatever it is, is in that <laughs> bar. And yeah, it's not fun. It's not fun. You have to be really into these things. It's like the English AWPs. I couldn't figure out how to play those. You had to have played them forever and ever and ever. Girl, let's check this song up too. Okay, so um, we have to make the games fun. And what we found, uh, one of our suppliers, one of our customers, our English customers, sent us a, a Gottlieb uh, spin a card, which is a 60s Gottlieb card game. Uh, not one of their job target things, but another one with you, you built up cards on, on, on uh, your hand and so forth. It was very understandable. People knew what to do. Part of the problem with a lot of our games is the casual player doesn't know what to do. And it, was, it wasn't pure skill. It wasn't ramps feeding back to the, re to the return lanes and flip and you know, orbit and orbit and orbit with the skill play just ate the game up. And what happened with these games? It, 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 remember, an operator's got to make money on it. So let's say the game's at 75 cents or half a buck for ease of multiplication. And you guys play one game for 45 minutes and don't need to play again. I play one game for 45 seconds. I don't want to play again. <laughs> game made a buck an hour, and I got to tell you, a buck an hour on a $5,000 piece of equipment is going to take a hell of a long time to pay for it. In fact, it's never going to get paid for it. It's not going to cut it, and we're not going to have, they're going to be the horse and buggies behind those uh, garage doors. We gotta let everybody have fun with this. What the what the spinner card had was something Harry Williams had taught, and that's randomness. Harry said the ball is wild. This is a ball of bat game. And we gotta know where the ball's going. The ball is wild. Okay, so we gotta have more randomness, and we've started doing that. We gotta have the game play shorter. You're not gonna play through it in one game. You're gonna go this way. You play through this feature of this game, and then the next time you play, you go there. This or that can't have you playing for 45 minutes if that operator's going to make any money. And we can't have me playing for 45 seconds because I'm not going to play again. Um, you know, I, I, I digress. I say me. I'm not a great player. I'm old and slow. And we, uh, part of the job at our place is during part of the design cycle, everybody has to play for 45 seconds. No, not all the people. In fact, you know, we do have a game out for them to play. But all the overhead group is assigned 45 minutes, uh, 15 minutes. Assigned 15 minutes, they must play. And some of our players, like Lyman, are expert players, and they're going to bring the, you know, the, the times up. Some of the players, like me, are old and slow. And I'm there for a particular purpose, because I play old and slow, like the guy in the pub who's had about five or six beer. <laughs> we got to see that he's going to have fun, too. So meanwhile, we see the games have to play shorter, have more randomness, have, have where I could have a chip. You know, Lyman and Keith was, he, he, he was, was with us at the time, and they used to play in the office across from me every afternoon. And our games were such that Lyman would play, you know, he plays way over like this and so forth. He'd play, Keith would be programming his office at the end of the hall. When Lyman got done with his ball, he'd walk by Keith's office, wave, sit down, he'd program for 15, 20 minutes while Keith came and played his ball. They were never in the room at the same time. But when we had the spinner card there, they were in that room, they were swearing at the game and at each other and having a good time. And when I played once in a while, I could have that great ball and I could be in the game. I might have been able to play them for a beer and have a chance of not being the sponsor all night long. Once in a while, I could have been myself. So the point is, we have to change the design philosophy so that the opera makes money, which means that the casual player and the great player have a good time playing the game. Now, I've watched some, some tournaments we had a tournament in Canada in the finals. The final game <coughs> came down to the last game. You know, it was going to be three out of five. We had to make it two out of three. <coughs> and the last of that three was an hour and a half. Two great players on a pinball machine a couple years ago, and that's the kind of games we were making. And the distributor who was putting it on put eight of this game new and eight of that game new, was ready to pull the plug and never do it again. I'm going to tell you, it's not really a great spectator sport. <laughs> <laughs> and in that light, you guys, some of you have groups that play at home, you know, and, and you, you know, you play in the base, the basement at home, or I don't know if you have basements here. We have basements. Uh, no, no, no. So you play in the rec group at, at home. Um, I went to college in New Orleans, and if we had a basement in New Orleans, it'd be a swimming pool. <laughs> yeah. So any of that. You know, one guy's playing the game and three guys are eating Cheetos most of the night. You know? I mean, it's just 
some of your some of your wives and kids won't play with you because you're really not that much fun to watch, <laughs> and they don't get to play enough. So even concept it makes sense for all all kinds of players, and that we need to go back to what we were. Harry Williams, the ball is wild, so that everybody can have fun with these, and you guys can have a challenge still. And this goes back to my father's days, you know. Again, in the in the 50s and 60s, I've heard forever that you know, the, the the thing in game design and the challenge was to let the casual player have fun and still keep the core guy and let him have fun. So we're trying to differentiate the product. We're trying to change the the design concept a little bit in in order to uh, to let everybody have fun with it, um, and so that we can have have uh, games games in the street. Uh, and, and therefore have games um, that are, uh, that, you know, will continue to be modern, be appealing to everybody, and will continue. My, my uh, passion, your hobby, and that's pinball machines. You know, I'm 66, I don't need to do this. I, that's a silly, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it's not that I a fortune, but I also get paid Social Security. You know, I could I could take my social security, but no, we want all of us want pinball machines to to exist uh, and to continue to exist. Now, for them to continue to exist, design philosophy, we, you know, we, I, I segment the market, sell a, sell a, a different kinds of product, get the design philosophy for the operators and for the homeowner. If, in those different uh, kind of products, we can do some little things different. Next thing is, and as you see, we we. In, in this room is indicative of it. We're changing the uh, the channels a little bit, and that is where, how you sell the channels you sell through. And we sell through people now that aren't necessarily uh, the traditional coin out dealer. Certainly in this country, in other countries, we have importers in each country. We have a very organized market, and, and those importers control their market, make a market, and sell to sub distributors. In effect, Stern Pinball is the importer for the United States. Technoplay, which is the Zachariah family from Zachariah Pinball, are the uh, importer for Italy and so forth. When, when I bought the company in 1999, uh, so I, I go to uh, uh, Emanuela who was here, and, and, and you met him, you met Emanuela, and uh, she was translating for Marino, the father, and I explained that I bought you know, the pinball company, and he said to Emanuela, He's crazy. We're going to have to help him. They had made pinball. They know what's involved in it. You know, they, they had made money and they had lost money, and ultimately they lost their company in it. In it. And they had to start all over again. And they're, they're a wonderful company right now, but they don't make pinball machines. So, any event, we 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 have a different type of, of product. We have different type of uh, for, for different segments of the market. We recognize the different segments. We want all three of the segments. Um, we. Um, uh, we, we have changed the product to some, to some extent. Uh, we look at the channels we're selling through, and we realize we have these three, three different marketplaces. Um, and, uh, you know, one thing I have to point out is that when we sell, and you guys are probably pretty lucky in this, I have a friend uh, who's in billiard, billiard business and store business and says that if a guy comes in, which doctor lawyer comes in and wants to buy a rec or a he wants to buy a pool table or this or that, they'll talk to him for 45 minutes, this or that. If he comes in with his wife, they'll close him. Because all big ticket items are approved. They're going to the house. It's mommy's decision. So daddy has to tell mommy it's for the kids. One of the great things that we lost as a uh, result of that is the old artwork had a lot of what we call TNA. No more DNA in you know. It's much more family friendly. Um, the, the, the next thing, the thing that I started to talk about, and I was talking about that big cable, and you saw it here, and we need to bring the technology into the 21st century. Manufacturing technology, product technology. Um, and, and we have to do things that really make sense to the game. Williams had, and George Gomez was a leading force in it, did a wonderful engineering effort with the uh, Pitball 2000. And they were able to integrate to some extent that monitor 
into the into the play of the game. It wasn't just eye candy. It was you know part of the game. Eye candy is nice once in a while, you know, like uh, Elvis uh, Elvis Gold. But we need to, in our LEs, have more than just eye candy. We need to have stuff in them, and we do. Uh, we, we we need to have eye candy that makes sense, like uh, you know the two different colors uh, for the uh, uh, Decepticon and Autobots and so forth. Uh, <coughs> But not just eye candy, we have to put some stuff in there. Um, what we need to do, and coming into the 21st century, I have a couple 8 by 10 bosses of that. Yeah. Actually, send me some pictures. I'll we'll put it on our Facebook website. Um, I should have brought my camera to take pictures. So, any of that, um, what do I mean? You know, what, what are some of the technological things? We are making basically the same product, just with more parts in it, as we did in the 70s. Our electronic system with a, with a big uh, sound CPU board, just like the old Williams games had, and a big I.O. power board is technology. Well, we, we've advanced a little in technology. We're surface mount. You know, you to forget the labor cost, everything through all inaccuracies doesn't exist anymore in the real world. And you can't get had, most of the parts can't be even gotten. And you also can't comply with um, uh, ROH, ROHS, Ro uh, Rojas uh, requirements, which means in, in Europe you can't you can't have lead in anything. You, you know, you, 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 we use a different display, not the gas discharge, uh, because of the lead around the edge of the display that seals the gas discharge display. We can't send that display to Europe, and in fact, we now have liked the reliability of the LED version of that display so much that we're going to go to it. Uh, in general, but you know, all this stuff, this old technology, yeah, we, could, we put a modern processor in finally in, in the SAM system. And SAM, by the way, stands either for SAM Stern, as we call the current system SAM, or there's no way that those chips, which are nothing but sand, can make these games operate. So it's all done with smoke and mirrors. And smoke and mirrors is SAM. The White Star system, a chemical named, and uh, Stern means star. German, Stern, Stern in German is star. I have white hair, so it was the white star system. That's where that came from. Anyway, so what do we do? You look at a car today, and when you're behind it, when you're in a, behind a new car, I want you to look at it. the light bulbs. It's LEDs in the taillights. Little ring of LEDs, they don't burn out. And they don't require a whole bunch of power. You know, our GIs, we've got a boat anchor in the bottom of that game. It's called a transformer, but it's, it's a boat anchor. And it's there. Largely because of the GIs, and, you know, you know, you got 44 GIs that are so full of power. Of course, when you guys start changing the LEDs, what a great idea. They're not pulling so much power anymore. Um, uh, and you'll see that our, our LEDs are our LEDs. Um, our LEDs use LEDs for the uh, GIs. They're surface mounts. Some of you would rather have bulbs plug in and out so you can change the colors. But under the, under the inserts, it's not the end of the world. And surface mount is what the real world is today. So, you've got a car, used to have a cable like we do, that thick around, running through the car. And I didn't bring my little piece of wire in. Um, now it's got six wires, like you plug your computer in to the, to the wall when, you, uh, when you're not wireless. You know, it's got six wires, and it's, it's a bus system, and it's talking to boards along the way. And instead of a cable like this, it's got a little six wire cable and some power distribution. That's it, right? And all that big cable stuff is gone. That I.O. board is gone. Okay. That'll have, we're working on that at the end of next year. A CPU soundboard about this big, which is all it should be. Not like this. No I.O. board like this. Old news. Modern. We've got to come into the 21st century. We need to work on the cabinet to come in the 21st century. Yes, we went to decals, uh, which is in the 21st century. That's what... Uh, uh, these are video game decals, same supplier, same thing that's on a Raw Thrills game, that type of thing. And we started it with Transformers, and we'll start doing that towards the future. Um, so we, we, we're changing the product, we're improving the product, we've got a lot of things that we want to do with it technologically uh, to make it better for reliability, for manufacturing, and maybe use it sometimes easier for you guys to trick out, as the case may be, uh, maybe doing some of it ourselves. But we're, we're, we're just playing in the area so far, we're learning. Now, I want you to understand, please, that some of the things we do may not make sense to you, a game design viewpoint or something, or any other way. We're trying something, 
not, you know, we're going to just keep doing exactly what we're doing. We're moving on, we're trying, we're changing what we do, and we will continue to do that. So please understand, you know, that's what we're trying to do. And so I think if, uh, if some of you think that we just don't get it, we're stupid, I, I do want you to know we're not crazy. You know, we're, we're trying what we're trying to do for different reasons, you know, and some will work to some one. Um, I said that we need to have pinballs and on the street. We need to have pinballs being operated. You know, it's a social game anyways. It's not really for four guys to sit in the basement three the kilos. It's a social game. You know, we should all get out a little bit. I mean, you know, Harry Williams once said, oh, it was hot hand, it had this big flipper, and the holes going around, the, the, the big flipper would go in a circle and knock them out. And Harry would say, oh, the kids are going to love this feature. And I said, Harry, that's great. I'm glad the kids are going to love it. But your job is to get people drunk and keep them drunk. Mm -hmm. We're in the bar business mostly in those days. Now we're in bars, bowling alleys, movie theaters, and the new street locations all over the world. And we need to be out there and have people, the public see us. The young people think pinball's cool, actually. They haven't seen it. A lot of them haven't seen it uh, very much. They need to see it more so that we have people interested in it later. And then we need them to have fun playing it. They think it's cool, but if they play it and it's 45 seconds, it's not cool. You guys can help all this. I would help this. Um, take your group out to play. You know, if you go out once once a week, or you know, meet somebody where at, a, at some bar once a week, or or uh, once every other week. And if you say to that owner of the bar, if you get a pinball in here, or a couple pinballs, probably one to start with, we're going to put the phrase in, in, in the bar business. And I was in the bar nightclub business. Is putting seats in the stools. We'll put seats in your stools. You know, there's eight of us that come out. We, you know, we're going to spend, you know, 10, 20 bucks a piece. It's money to you. Talk to your operator. Put a game in here. We'll come here and we'll we'll play, you know, a, a tournament uh, here. And now, of course, your first question is, is the operator going to put anything decent and take care of it? Um, the operator may not even do it. The operator may, and I know many guys that are doing this, that put games in for the operator, so to speak. The operator says, I don't want the pinball. They can have the pinball. There's a bar. It, it, I was visiting my uh, daughter in, uh, in uh, Denver. Uh, she moved there. And we're driving by a bar called the One Up. And she says, oh, there's pinball machines in there. I said, well, come on. It's, it's in their Wrigleyville. Wrigleyville's their baseball park. It's their baseball. It's all 20-somethings in, in, in the place, which is great, because uh, that's younger people playing the game. So all right, I said, great. So where are we going? Turn around. So we go in. 14 pinball machines are in there. All casual players coming into play. The operator is what I call an enthusiast operator. Not an operator, but an enthusiast operator. Dan is one of the competitors' enthusiasts. The first Sunday of every month, he has a competition there that has the good players coming in. So he does attract them. What's really interesting, he owns the pinball machines. There's also three ski balls in there. And I've seen that bar, ski ball competition going on in bars in, in Chicago, one bar. He has. He doesn't. The bar owns and has 42, 42, 42 1980s video games. You know, like all the games from the 80s. They have a couple 1990s that are, uh, uh, that are in that 42, and those are uh, that Mortal Kombat. But other than that, it's all 1980s. And the point of that to me, uh, coming back, looping around what I was saying before, these, the video games often got too complex. Same is true of our pinball machine, and the young people will play if they can play, if it's playable. And our games became unplayable. So back to what you guys can do. Number one is try and put, tell them to put seats in the stools. Number two, if not, maybe you put your games in there. I know somebody in Chicago, uh, the guy who made those corner pieces that are in our packing, he operates the games in one of the bars uh, not too far from us and rotates his games out, and, and he gets a lot of enthusiasts coming to play. Uh, but you know you you can do that and, and have your own your group go go to that bar. May work, may not work. Uh, and the third thing I'm going to say is you know we started uh, we we linked to uh, it started with Pinball Rebel. We linked to them, uh, and we have a, a, a site. And there's plenty of other ones that you could list where pinball machines are, what's there, and you all want to do that. And that way, keep track and tell each other where there are games to play. And then we'll all know more. I, I know I have to use them when somebody comes to Chicago and says, we're going to play a pill motion. i got to go go and find that for them that way. So those, those are three things that you can do. In any event, 
what we're doing is we're trying to design a game for, for a broader group of players, the pro game, we're trying to make something special for the collectors in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the uh, LE game. We're looking at how to best distribute these. We know we got three player bases to deal with, uh, buyer bases that deal with operators for, cat, for players. Most of the operators tell me, including the enthusiast operators, that the, their players are casual players in bars and, and in restaurants or whatever it is. It's casual players. It's not really just expert players. Uh, not enough of you guys going out. You're not drinking enough. <laughs> um, I get that problem. I like Russian vodka, and I got a call from the uh, Russian consulate that I wasn't drinking enough, and it's exports are down. So I haven't spent much time. <laughs> anyway, um, what do you got? Uh, segment the market, different product for it. More than half our business is for operators all over the world. We export more than half of our games. And so we need to we need to make the game more modern, keep up with it, but still not change the nature of the product. That's what we're doing, and we appreciate your support with it. And with that, if you got any questions, I'll do that. I have no idea where I was in my notes. I just love my slide.